Today's project, we have a sandblaster, a dust collection booth, and an oven. The oven needs to be vented to the outside because we cure powder coat in it. This is a project that's not yet done and I will start making video on. And this is a sandblaster. And eventually we want to also collect dust from the chop saw, the radial arm, the drill, the band saw, which actually does have ducts collection on it, and the grinder station down there. What we got on workbench is some plumbing to start doing that. And the way we're going to do it is we're going to use this T right here. And we're going to come through the wall right there in the corner. Two ribs out, do a T. One goes going to the left, the other is going to proceed across the barn. We'll use that for the sandblaster. And this switch right here controls the dust collection system. And we'll take a look at that. This is a uh, homemade dust collector that I made. Um, the Cyclone, which really works extremely well, uh, came from Oneida Air Systems, and I think they're offering it again. There for a while they sold the whole thing, not just the Cyclone. And then the base is made out of a Delta dust collector, but the bags let too much go through it. I didn't like it. And this Cyclone does a much better job. We've got an inlet right here and that's going to run from there to that wall up to the ceiling and through. Now this inlet, this is important for a cyclone to work correctly. They say that they want a straight run of pipe, a straight run of pipe to run from here to your first elbow 10 times the diameter of this opening. Now I can't do that, so I'm gonna do what I can. And they say the reason they want you to do that is, is that it gets every, all the dust and everything traveling through the pipe in one stream and gravity, while it's traveling, gravity pulls the dust to the bottom of the pipe. And when it enters the cyclone, it's in a single stream. And there's actually videos out on YouTube that show this is clear and it shows the stream going around in stripes in the unit all the way down to the uh, container there. The outlet is this and it's a pipe that goes right down the center and stops right about here, right about here. And then it sucks air in, but the centrifugal force of the dust traveling around the outside of the can and gravity carries the dust on down into the dust collection because the dust collection is at the same pressure or vacuum as the whole rest of the system. And that's why the dust does not go out the exhaust. All right, so now we're going to start putting pipe together. And the first thing we got to do is drill a hole in the barn. This is the far side of the wall, the side that the dust collector is going to be on. And we want this pipe to come right through here. I don't remember any wires at all in this section. I've drilled one exploratory hole, there's nothing behind it. I'm going to drill another one right here, and then we're going to drill a six inch hole right there. There's nothing there either. So, six inch hole. Where's the bit? The six inch drill bit. We're going to test this uh, DeWalt. How old is it? I it, have no idea how old this is. How old is it? We bought that when I first started. So, it must be at least 13 years old. Here we go, six inch hole, 13 year old DeWalt. It's 
still got it. I gotta admit, I didn't think it was gonna be that tough. <laughs> So you're letting it torque you up and it's taking you off center. Well, let me get you that air drill. That's perfect. Perfect. I'm going to drill the hole. Alright, you drill the hole. Now we gotta get, yep, exactly. Oh, I thought I had you doing this now. Let's, uh, are you done with the hanger? So what we're gonna do here is, this is a quarter inch pilot hole. I'm gonna take this quarter inch drill, drill this hole through there so I know exactly where it is on the other side. And then we're gonna drill the corresponding hole to this on the other side from the other side. So we gotta mount the pipe to something here. And what I'm gonna do is put this two by four up here and that'll space it away from the ceiling the correct distance for this hole and it gives me a solid point to run the strap around all the way around the pipe rather than let it hang so it'll be fixed in place so let's try okay and the next step is to put another one down here because we're going to move over and then go down. This is the second stringer to go up to support that duct pipe. And I know the way this barn was built is there's trusses that support the roof that run that way. And there's stringers every two feet that run this way that this was bolted up to. And it also supports the insulation in the ceiling. By the way, this shop is really well insulated. We have four different furnaces in here. We have two 70s in the two far corners and two 40s in the other two corner. That's BTU. The 170 heats the whole barn. It's amazing with the insulation. All right, so I've pre-drilled. I'm only gonna put three bolts in this two by four. It's only supporting uh, six inch duct work. So let's see if we can do this without dropping anything. All right. Now we'll drill a pilot hole for the other two. And that will be up there nice and tight. So these black bolts have a heck of a time getting through the metal. So what you have to do is drill a little pilot hole for it. Now, I'm going to be smart. I'm going to do that in too. So I got a pilot hole all the way up. And I'm through the middle. Okay, I've drilled a another pilot hole in that one down there. Let's put this in. This is the configuration that's gonna come through the wall. This will be up against the ceiling, like so, up like that, like that. This one is going to point down to pick up the dust collector, and this one is gonna run across the ceiling to over on top of the oven. This is the far side of the wall um, that's gonna do a 90 down to the dust collector. So I need a short piece of pipe to go between the two. Turns out to be nine and three quarters of an inch. So what I have to do is cut a piece. So 
what I do is I measure all the way around and I put a little dash about every inch or so and then I can connect the dashes and I end up with a pretty darn straight line. I've tried using tape and I see people do that all the time and it never comes out straight. Now this isn't particularly straight but I know it's 93 quarters of an inch every inch so I ought to be really close. So let's try cutting this. Don't kid yourself, this edge is sharp. Be careful with it. These pipes, the way they go together, there is a little D-shaped punch out on one side, and on the other side is a little groove. And what you do to put these things together is take this little end and you stick it inside that groove there, far enough so that this D-shaped punch out catches the back side of this lip and that's what holds this thing together. It just snaps together like that and it will snap together. Now if you want to take it apart you can. You can if you squeeze far enough down you'll disengage those three shapes and the pipe will come apart and you can put it right back together. Oops like so nice and tight. So this is going to be the piece that goes through the wall, like that, but now we got a problem. Well, do we really have a problem? Yeah, we do. Because I could take this piece and go like that, and we would be together, but then I have the same problem here. So what we want to do is make a nail on the end of this pipe and your local hardware store will have a tool to do just that. They just may not be familiar with it. What you this is the tool. As you can see, it's pretty straightforward. And stick it in like this, all the way in and squeeze. Then I move over to the next tooth and squeeze. And I move over to the next tooth and squeeze all the way around. Being careful to align it all nice up and you end up with a professional looking crimp joint that will slide into a pipe of the same size. You might have to stay away from that scene. So now let's see if that will fit into here. Beautiful. And that will get us through the wall. So that's going to go down the wall, that goes through the wall, this comes across the wall, this picks up the dust booth from one or the other. This does the jog over to the 2x4 we just put up and then we'll continue on through the shop. And what we want to do is run some tape across that to seal that seam. So I'm going to put some of this tape on the outside just to seal it up. So now let's go stick it up in a hole and see what happens. Just in time. Trust me. So fit. I'm going to get it through to the other side. Uh, this project is uh, moving along. This is just all knocked into place. It's very loose. I just have it set up so I know where it's, it's all going to go because it all de really depended upon this duct right here for the sandblaster. This is probably the most important duct in the whole system. So this is the one the system is being built for. Now, and a lot of thought has gone into this. So what I want is the T to come down here like this. And to get that, I have a nice T here, which will work nicely. And then the pipe will continue on around the perimeter of the barn. 
uh, and pick up the dust from the uh, chop saw, the regular arm saw, the drill, the band saw, and the grinders. So we have to get this here. In order to get here, we need a piece of pipe that turns out to be one foot long. And we got to create a nipple for that. So we're going to do that down on the workbench. But to get from here down, what we're going to do is go like this. This. Again, I need a male male nipple to hold the two together, and we'll make that on the workbench. So now imagine that over here, like that. So I'm just going to hold this piece now. So this piece goes into that T and then it's reduced down to four inches. And there's a couple reasons for doing that. One is, is I want to be able to have this be flexible. I want to be able to take the end off of it. The sandblaster is on rollers so I can pull it away from the wall on sand. The next is, is uh, probably kind of a side effect, but it's interesting to note it and it works out to my advantage, which most things don't, but this one happens to. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go from a six inch to a four inch. Now, what happens is, is that in order for the, the velocity inside picks up, it's also a restriction, but the velocity picks up. And what, what the, what's good about that is, is that you will carry the particles in the sandblaster booth up this vertical stretch once it it's in the horizontal stretch, it can travel along the bottom of the pan, uh, the, the bottom of the duct, and then it goes down, and I'll show you that part later, and then into the cyclone. So that's the plan. So we're gonna make a male male here. We're gonna make a male end on this. Plug that in here, T, plug that in there. Pipe goes on off its way, and this is gonna go down to the sandblaster. So let's go to the uh, workbench. The first step is to make a short length of a pipe that turns out to be exactly one foot long. Pipe one foot long. So now we have a six inch male which fits nicely into a six inch female, it's nice and tight. And um, what we need to make now is the four inch male male so that we can go from this to that four inch flexible rubber hose. And you just saw me make this, so there's no sense in you watching me make that. So I'll bring you back when we're ready to hang that. The main ducting for the dust system has been mocked together. It's all hanging there loose. And now we're going to screw it all together tight and we'll tape all the seams. We are finally to the point where we're going to put something together. This has all been uh, mocked together. So we got all the right lengths and everything. Um, this is the T that goes above the uh, sandblast booth. And I will put these together in modules and then put them up. Uh, what I like to do is I like to at least put two in. If this was heat duct system, I'd probably put four in. But as this is a suction system and I, it's well strapped, I'm only going to put two in. I'm going to put them in in such a direction that I can take them out while they're still up on the ceiling. So I'm going to put one here and one here. This is the side and this is the bottom. I'm also going to take the time to, when I can, put the seam to the back side so the shiny side faces out. I'm going to tape all the seams, including this seam, and any 90s that I got. Now this is a brand new um, 90 that I got, and these turn so that you can get different angles. And this is this was one I was using to mock up the S turn up that comes out of the wall, and it falls apart. It's so cheap, it just falls apart. And you can put it back together and it comes back apart again. So, but I'm not going to use it, I got to return it. But that's how cheap and inexpensive this I mean, you can hear, this is an old, this is a new. I mean, there's no comparison. So, I'm going to drill and then tape every seam, including every one of these seams, because obviously they leak like a sieve. 
So everything will be sealed. So what we want is to have the vacuum that's developed by the dust collector to be available at the farthest unit without as many leaks as possible. Now I know that my damper valves are not gonna seal tight and they will leak, but I have a significant amount of air movement over there, so I think we'll be all right. So let's drill some hole, um, now. I, I, I'm sure everybody's watched and seen the furnace guys take these things and just zip them right in. I can't do it. Um, it, I, it drills the first hole and then it pushes the metal away. This thing starts to thread in and when it threads in, it hasn't drilled the hole and it pushes the piece of metal away. So the best thing I have found to do is to drill a pilot hole and then put the uh, self-tapping bolt in. So that's what we're gonna do. So I drill a pilot hole. Now that's a dull drill. Now this bit is magnetized so it holds the screw. So that puts that together. So now we're going to put tape on this. So I know that's thin, but it's good stuff. And now let's assemble this bottom part. This is the tube that runs down to the sand blaster. It's amazing, this takes up so much space. All right, so it's on the ceiling like that. We have a, the uh, seam here, seam here, and a, and a hose clamp there. So we'll put, turn that around, put it to the wall. We'll stick this on here. And we got a nice butt fit. That's why we did this uh, small, medium, large. Male, female thing so that we got the right one so it'll butt right up against each other and have a nice seam like that. Module's ready to go up. That's next. Here we are looking at what would be the connection between the sand blaster and the dust collection system. And we're going to go a different way. Originally, we had talked about putting this directly in the top of the sand blaster, it goes through the um, metal like that and then you bend the tabs over on the inside and that holds it together and then we were going to put a damper on the inside of that open and close then we we're going to have a reducer to go to four then I was going to have to make another male male union between this and the hose and then have that Go like that. There was this hole already in the back of the unit from when I had it set up at home. I had it set up differently. So what I've done is kind of copied their idea. They had this connection where you bend the tabs over. So it, I think you go one inside, one outside, and that's what holds it tight. So. I took a highly modified A90 and I used an old one because it's out of much heavier metal. I mean, there's nothing to that. And then I took and I very carefully fit a damper on the inside of this thing. Oh. On. And I spaced it out and double bolted it 
So it operates very nicely and it has resistance to it, should stay in position. So that's gonna be my on off. And then I did the same thing, I made tabs. And I'm gonna put this on the back here like this and I'll just bolt this up. Now what I will do is I'll run a via cock all the way around that seam and now this will go on here like that and that'll go to the ceiling and this can now be this this setup was and I don't know if you can see this this setup was made so that this plaster would roll right up against the workbench there's a lip here so this sand blaster rolls right up against it. And now, this pipe, I have a half inch clearance there, and I have room to put the plug in the outlet, and the sand blaster is even with the front of the workbench. This is the T we've been working on to get uh, dust collection to the sandblaster. I'm going to put it in here. Like that. See it rotated to the back. So let's put a couple screws in there. And this one, I'm going to go ahead and put this screw in. I'm going to put the next one in and by putting another screw here what it does is tighten that strap up. So what I did is I tightened this up by one. I moved the screw down one. Now when I put a screw down here it's going to pull that strap tight. We are now at a point where we're ready to connect this up. Now this slides right into the workbench here, like that. So we can't go all the way back because the hose is on here. We want to put this hose on. And we do have some range of movement with this hose. This hose is actually from my old installation. What we have to do is get this hose over this nail connector. And it's not that easy because the rubber catches on the edge. But once you get it started, it's fairly strong. I mean, it's bolted on, but it's just this thin metal. So you gotta be careful. There, we got the first one. And we got the second one. And our on off still works. Alright. And we'll tighten this down. Nice and tight. We'll cock this up and we'll be good to go. And then this cord, which is for the lights, can plug right in here. Like so, it's got room. Good. Now we have a lights inside the sand booth. All right. I'll show you the rest of it. This is the far side of the wall from where we just ran the duct across the ceiling. We're going to come out of the ceiling down. I want to have access to get to uh, the clean out, remove this pail, and take the sand out. And this is the exhaust. I have to have room to make this a little flexible and go out the wall right there. I have pictures of that wall before the sheathing went up. And there's a post here and there's a post here. There's nothing there. It's empty. I can go right through the wall there and that'll be the exhaust. I have a very nice exhaust port that we're going to put on. The time has come. I have to drill a hole in this barn wall that I spent a lot of time building. 
So I want to make sure it's in the right spot. So let's take a look at some of my figuring. What we have here is what it looks like from the inside of the barn and the outside of the barn. This is the jam of the garage door. This is a piece of metal trim on the inside. And then this is the railing that we just put up. This is the rib of the wall, the metal wall. There's seven inches between each rib. This metal railing protrudes into the seven inches. On the outside, this is the door jam, metal trim, then rib, then another rib. The two ribs don't line up. This is also seven inches. So we have four and three quarters to the edge of the rib. We got seven inches between. We got an inch and a half between the four inch hole. So if we add all that up, we get eight and one quarter inches to the center line. Eight and one quarter inches to the center line. So we know where that's going to come through. Unfortunately, what that does is put this hole right up against the railing. This hole is going to end up right up against the railing and that's going to be a tight fit. So I'm going to try to sneak it just a little bit too off center, but the duct, the piece of metal is actually seven inches. So it's going to kind of force me to put it right dead center in that panel. So that's what we're going to do. After careful measurement, I believe that if I drill right there, it will come out in the center of the two ribs on the outside. Remember this rib is not lined up with the outside. It's got insulation wrapped around it. Alright, I think you were dead on. I think the only it's off a little and I think that's just you you're you're, okay. you're wandering. Dead on, huh? I would say it was dead on. Say dead on to the camera. Dead on. Alright, now camera. we gotta drill a four inch hole. <laughs> Before I put this vent on, let me talk to you a little bit about this vent. Every now and then you'll find something good in a big box store. But this thing is built really nice. The uh, flapper mechanism, when, it, when it's sitting up at the back of the house, this the flapper is actually at an angle so that it wants to come closed even it's not just hanging closed it's at an angle so it closes the pivot point is a, a metal pivot point so it, it closes very nicely this is nice it's rattling but it's nice heavy duty metal um, it's made so that uh, when the water hits it, the water is going to drain off. This slides up inside, so the top is up in here, so the water all drains off. It naturally drains off. Let's see if we can put it together. So it slides together nicely. Now it's all one piece. You got four nice mounting holes. Uh, I'm going to use stainless steel. So that'll work. And the flapper, nice and free. So let's go put this on. It's cold out here, so I'm going to run some caulk around this thing. And right across the top so the water can't get in through the top. I've carefully pushed all the insulation up out of the way. And I've drilled pilot holes for these screws to go in. Should be right there, right there. And now we'll bed this caulk up in here and we got a nice bead that came up out of the top. And we'll put some screws in. These are stainless steel screws. Flapper is nice and free. We got a nice bead across here. We got a nice bead down inside there to run off to here, to run off to here, and won't get any water. And this flapper, nice and free. All right, let's get in out of the coal.
Final connection to the outside. This is the outside. This is the outlet from the uh, cyclone. Now, we want a nice flexible piece between here. And this is from the old sandblaster. But this goes in here. Okay, that one's on. Okay, they're both on. Nice and solid. This has got to go against the wall yet. Let's put a, a bead of cock here. And I'm not the best at cocking, but all I want to do is fill up the hole. All right, that actually didn't come out too bad. Another hole to drill. Oh, that one went pretty good. That was a good one. So, put that in there like that. It's a nice fit. Put a little silicone around there, seal tight. Little fingers on the inside will bend over. I'll show you that real quick. And then we put a damper through these two holes right here. We'll turn it on, close it up. So let's get the ductwork run. What we have here is the piece that's going to go in the side of the uh, dust collection booth. And we've got to be able to shut it off. And although they drill the holes for the damper, they don't give it to you. So you have to buy it as a separate piece. And a buck or something like that, but it's ridiculous not to include it. And then what they give you is this disc with this piece of metal on it and the arm and no opposing axle to support it. So we split a bolt in half and tack welded it in place. So it now goes through that hole like that and through that hole like that. And we can clip this thing back together temporarily. And then it does pivot, but what we'll do is we'll put a washer and we'll double nut this side so we can support the axle, but it won't put any tension on the damper. And then we'll put this arm on this side, like so. And now we have a valve that will open and close with an indicator and that will control our airflow through the dust cabinet. This duct collector is mounted on dollies. In fact, it's the dolly that used to, the 49 used to sit on. So it's plenty strong and it rolls real nice. I want to be able to move it out so I can clean underneath of it, but I want to connect it to the system. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to roll this over here and then slide this on. And I'll put one screw in there. The damper works just fine and it's, it's a nice tight seal. So I'll put one screw in here probably. Maybe I put a pin in here so that you just pull it in and out, but that'll keep it mechanically fastened. It will leak a little bit, but not much. Everything else is taped up. This is now connected all the way to the dust collector. If I turn the dust collector on, we will actually get air coming in through there. This being a complicated curve, what I did is I marked it once I had it where I liked it. I'm going to run a piece of tape over it to kind of hold it in position and then I'm going to fit it up into position to make sure this is correct before I tape it up. This was just too complicated to get all the angles just right down on the workbench. So we ended up screwing parts of it and leaving parts of it free so that we could get all the angles in this thing just right. These joints are so sloppy that they won't stay in position. And I thought about tapping on them a little bit, and then I was afraid I wouldn't be able to turn them. 
So I just struggled with it here. I hung the pipe that's running to the oven. And then I put this in between. I had to make a little spacer right there. But now it's a nice flow. So what I'm gonna do is put the final screw in here. And I'm gonna start taping. Okay. Now it's time to tape. And what I'll do is I'll lay the first tape from the back side all the way down. And then I'll turn around and lay the other tape from this side so you don't see the seam. That's nicely taped and sealed. It won't leak. We now have a completed system. Vent for the oven. Pick up for the dust booth. Pick up for the sandblaster. And an extension for version 2.